What's good? It's your boy Fanon. Gonna talk a little heavyweight boxing, man. Just came off doing a video about Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. Where two guys in a weight class, one of the marquee weight classes in boxing. Actually, we might actually have an opportunity to see them fight next year. If it was up to the two fighters, I believe that that fight could happen. But now I got to move on to talk about the heavyweight division. Without a doubt, the most disappointing division in boxing. Three pieces of news I'm going to cover. One of them illustrative of the problem. Tyson Fury says that he's coming back from, he's back, he's got, he's signed with Frank Warren, and he's coming back to fight, and he looks forward to getting his, getting his belts back. Anthony Joshua says, that implies that he doesn't think that there's $100 million in the fight, even though that's a number that was reportedly came from his own camp, and you can easily justify. But in order to fight Deontay Wilder, you know, he wants $50 million up front. And then third, Anthony Joshua sets a world record for boxer size. <laughs> Boxer size. All right, so <laughs> first things first, man. Dude, this dude is so Hollywood, it's disgusting, man. He's so corporate. He's so corporate and so, oh, he's so anti boxing, man. That's anti boxing, man. <laughs> God, dog. You got Tyson Fury, who is. And see, this is for people that used to that will accuse me of always siding. You know, ah, you're just a you know a B L A C K channel, and you're always supporting the B L A C K boxer. Anthony Joshua is that, okay? And I'm not supporting him because he's complete corporate hype job. This dude is a complete corporate hype job and it's so obvious that he's a corporate hype job it would be irresponsible from irresponsible for me to point out Vasily Lomachenko's the hype job around Vasily Lomachenko and point out the hype job around Gennady Golovkin and not point out the hype job around around Anthony Joshua and if you guys and if you can't see it that's on you if you can't see that that's on you but before I get into the details of this, oh, please subscribe to the channel and come to the and come to the live streams. I'm pushing all these type of conversations to the live streams. We usually have a few hundred people, a couple hundred people in there. We're having who are very knowledgeable and mature boxing fans talking about boxing. And the best way to know and have these conversations about this subject and others is to subscribe and hit the bell icon. So I certainly, certainly hope you accept my invitation because you know the more mature. The more mature, knowledgeable boxing fans and new boxing fans, right, that want to learn a lot about the sport from guys that really know it. And I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about a lot of the people in the live stream. It really is a great place. It really is a great place to be, it's a, and it's a lot of fun. But let me go through these. <laughs> let me go through these articles, man, real quick. And I tell you, I'll give you the gist again of what I said, man. First of all, you got Tyson Fury says the king has returned. I'm back to reclaim what is rightfully mine. This is going to be an interesting journey. There's a lot of fascinating challenges out there for me, and I'm looking forward to get started. To getting started, I can't wait to get into the ring and put on display. Put on a display for all my fans. I'm the fittest that I've ever been. My timing and reflexes are better than they've ever been. I'm coming into my prime of my career, and I'm more confident than I've ever been. All of my focus is on my return at Manchester Arena, June 9th. All of the current heavyweight champions out there are very vulnerable and very beatable. The heavyweight division should now be put on notice because the lineal champion is back on June 9th and will be looking to pick back up where he left off, said Warren. I'm thrilled that Tyson has entrusted us with the responsibility of re recharging his career and to steer him back to where he wants where he once emphatically belonged. Uh, we're not, we're not for the exploits of Dusseldorf 
on November 28, 2015, the now thriving and fascinating heavyweight scene might have been remained stagnant. But Tyson's comprehensive schooling of the longstanding Olymp- uh, champion, Vladimir Klitschko, opened all sorts of doors from which others have ultimately benefited. Now Tyson is back in fantastic shape and full of beans, ready to take the first step on the road back to world champion domination once again. I'm certain that the boxing public who he never who he never lost the affection of will get behind him in force and support his journey starting at the Manchester Arena on June 9th, June 9th. I am excited about that, man. I am excited about that because Tyson Fury will fight somebody, man. And he won't play a bunch of games. The dude is down to throw hands. And say what you want, man. The dude is down to throw them hands. Yeah, he had his issues, no doubt about it. Yeah, he, you know, yeah, he gained weight or whatever. You might not like him. You might not think that he's the best fighter in the world. You might, whatever. But you know, a dude had enough spunk to come overseas and get in the ring with Deontay Wilder and get into his face. He had all three belts. He jumped on a plane, came over to the United States and jumped in the ring and and got in the face of Deontay Wilder. But now you got this Nancy boy out here, this six foot five, 260 pound corporate monster named Anthony Joshua, who absolutely is the antithesis of Tyson Fury, man. He's the antithesis of of a gritty, of a gritty down to throw hands boxer. He's a he's a corporate ploy. Just look at this picture that this dude is taking, man. <laughs> boxer size. This dude is the king of boxer size. Oh my god, man. But anyway, this is what Tyson Fe- I mean De- Anthony Joshua has to say about Deontay Wilder. <laughs> if it is a hundred million, hundred million fight, and they're and they're happy with taking 60-40, I'll take 50-50. Give me $50 million up front, and I swear I'll take that fight tomorrow. They're not making offers like that, but they're talking about it, so it's not real. We offered them a lucrative deal, and we're just waiting to hear if he's serious or not. They like to jump on social media rather than emailing us back in a professional manner. I don't understand where they're coming from. Nevertheless, there are many heavyweights out there that are serious. Uh, It has to happen. It's There's not really been many fights in the heavyweight division history that haven't happened when you're talking about the championship level in terms of history i think this fight has to happen because it wouldn't be great for this era of boxing if it doesn't happen okay let's take off let's just take out the the sub you know the subjective you know the opinion about how much the fight could be worth if they're telling the right if they're telling the the proper numbers for the fight that happened with Vladimir Klitschko, that's $54 million in that fight that was in the fight with Vladimir Klitschko. If you do 500,000 pay-per-view buys in the United States, that's a, that's a million, that's a hundred million dollars. But listen to how he's talking, Mr. Corporate, Mr. Corporate, pay me $50 million up front and I'll take the fight tomorrow. 50 million. $50 $50 million up front. He sounds like he doesn't want the fight. We offered them a lucrative deal. You offered him $12.5 million, gave him 48 hours without any idea of where the fight was going to be, when the fight was going to be, if the fight was going to be the next fight, if there was a rematch clause. That is a 48 hours to accept something that isn't even a real offer. But they just want to get on. (laughs) The dude doesn't want the fight. okay? and at a certain point in time, man, you got to treat this dude like, you know what? The girl don't like you. The girl doesn't want to go to the party. She said, you know, maybe if you do this, maybe if you do that, maybe if you act serious about it, you know, maybe if you got better shoes and a better, then maybe I would try to come to the party. You know what I mean? Just ask me again next week, you know, because I got a lot of other guys asking to dance with me. So, you know, 
I don't really know, you know, maybe the girl don't want to go. Okay. If you got to ask all, you got to do all that talking, all that asking and going back. She doesn't want, she doesn't want you. So it's very clear that Anthony Joshua does not want Deontay Wilder. He got, he's got pushed into a situation where, he, where they had to make some type of offer so that they can make it, so they could have it out in the public that they made the offer. And that's all they were doing. All they did is make an offer so that they could say they can make an offer. And if you take all the money out of it, whether it's $100 million or not, the offer itself was ridiculous. $12.5 million, take it or leave it with 48 hours, and you don't know where it is, you don't know when it is, you don't know if it's his next fight. That could be, that could mean anything. They gave him an offer that was a lucrative offer. How do you know that's a lucrative offer? There's no if and, there's no when, what, where, how in the deal. But anyway, man, he doesn't want the fight. He's clear that he doesn't want the fight. So I think continuing to ask and try to hold this Mr. Boxer size feet to the, to the fire about the fight is just a waste of time. It's a waste of time because he's out here setting world records, you know, getting, getting 500 yuppies, getting 500 yuppies to dance around and drink fit water. <laughs> and as long as long as he can get paid to have, to skin and grin out there in front of these people, <laughs> he ain't gonna take the fight, man. But man, Tyson Fury though, that's why I'm just like, man, Tyson Fury, just I'm so happy that he's back. I'm really happy that he's back. Because there that means that there's a chance. That the people in the UK will not let this dude get away with this skinning, this skinning, grinning corporate game that he's playing. Because that's what it is, man. That's what it is. When you have this dude talking about, I'll take 50, give me $50 million up front and I'll find him tomorrow. What if you got 50 million? What if you got $50 million um, on the back end? You never earn no 50. Man, who gets $50 million for a fight, man? See, either he's not telling the truth, which I don't honestly, man, right about now, I'm not believing the numbers that are coming out of the UK. I'm not believing them. I can, I might believe, I believe that maybe the capacity of, you know, Wembley Stadium or of Cardiff, I believe that part of it. But I'm not, I'm not believing that the pay-per-view numbers, just so everybody knows, are not released. Sky Sports does not release pay-per-view numbers. So nobody knows how much money the guy's actually making. Out of the how much Sky actually sold, how many people actually bought those pay per views because they never release it and they have never released it. It's always been something where people have had to estimate what it was, but they close, but they hold those numbers to close to their chest because they don't want if somebody doesn't perform well, they don't want to mess their brand up by saying that something flopped. Unlike Showtime and HBO, where they don't have a choice because they're publicly traded companies in the United States. So they have, uh, I think it's the Security and Exchange Commission, makes it, says that they have to let those numbers out. That's why Steven Espinoza got into it with uh, Dana White about the numbers for the Floyd Mayweather, uh, the Floyd Mayweather fight with uh, Conor, with Conor McGregor. And he said, look, I, if it's 4.3, I got to say it's 4.3. We're a publicly traded corporation. We, we have to let people know what that is. We have to disclose it and we have to be accurate in it. Otherwise, we could be affecting our uh, the stock price of our parent company, and we'd be in a lot of trouble for that. But you don't know that about Anthony Joshua. But I know this. Anthony Joshua says that it, and Eddie Hearn are willing to come over and fight Jarrell Miller in the United States in the Barclays Center. How could you possibly be making more money for fighting Jarrell Miller uh, in the Barclays Center than you would, get, you would have fighting Deontay Wilder in the UK? How is that possible? How is that possible? It's a 14,000 seat arena and you're still going to have the same, you're going to have fewer pay-per-view buys, but he's willing to do that. But he needs $50 million or he would be willing to sign tomorrow, not today, <laughs> but tomorrow with the $50 million, uh, give it to me up front. You know, that that's a backing it up with another offer he knows he's not getting. And that offer to fight for $50 million up front, that 
is just of as valid an argument in my uh, offer in my arg- in my eyes is that twelve point five million for Deontay Wilder that didn't come with a date, that didn't come with a didn't come with an aven- a venue, didn't come up with whether it was going to be Anthony Joshua's next fight or not. Anthony Joshua could lose to Pavekin, still not have any uh. Not have any belts, and Deontay Wilder would have to fight him for twelve point. Well, I mean, who knows what that is? That's a non-offer, but that offer is just as real as this offer is. It's just as real as this fit this fit water model made to him. And so, what I'm hoping for with Tyson Fury is, man, the Tyson Fury because I know we got enough subscribers and enough people commenting. These are the people in the comment section. Y'all, all you cats coming up, people's, you know, telling me that, uh, you know, I'm full of bullocks and, you know, how um, I'm a hater and how Anthony Joshua earns how much. But these are you guys. That's who you guys are right there. All in your little fit water, all in your little fit, in your fit water boxer size lesson, dog. <laughs> all in your... <laughs> <laughs> trying to smile in the face of this dude's teeth. Look how big this dude's teeth are. And somebody called me a COON, man. Look, that ain't boxing, man. That's not the sport that I love. The sport that I love is about two guys getting in the ring and those guys trying to find out who the best guy is. With this, with this corporate, with this this corporate facade called Anthony Joshua is, is just that. It's a corporate facade. Can he fight? Yeah, he can fight. He can. But come on, man. He's more, he seems like he doesn't want to fight. He's cool with 34% of the purse, not knowing how much money is going to be made. He's cool with 34, 30, what is it, 30, what do you get, 30 something percent, almost 40% for Joshua. They didn't know how much money was going to be made. That wasn't a flat fee on that. And they didn't know how much, they didn't know what the totals were going to be. That was a percentage cut. And if you th- and if if it's a hundred million dollars, why would you go 50-50 but have to have it up front? Or you in order to go 60-40, in order to give basically the same jo- Deontay Wilder basically the same deal, not much different than what was what was given to Joseph Parker. You need the money up front for Deontay Wilder. <laughs> you need the money up front. Look, man, it's time. I, honestly, man, this dude is right now. That's why I'm so I'm so hoping that Tyson Fury comes back in shape. I mean that he comes back, he's looking good, and that the UK, the UK boxing fans, I'm not talking about these cats over here, you know, these people, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> these marathon runners standing behind Anthony Joshua. I'm not I'm not worrying about these people. But the real boxing fans the real cats who are, you know, who follow, who fo- who who follow Khalid Yafai, you know what I mean? <laughs> who might follow, who, who uh, you know, who are real boxing fans will demand at the least that the real champion in the UK can't be avoided. And that's Tyson Fury, because let's be real, Tyson Fury, just like Frank Warren said, those, if it wasn't for Tyson Fury beating, beating, uh, Beating Vladimir Klitschko and taking Vladimir Klitschko's belts, boxing wouldn't you wouldn't have an exciting heavyweight division right now. If he had just retired, if 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 Vladimir Klitschko had just retired, all these guys would have had to fight each other. But you know, you got your you got your you got your fitness water model asking for fifty million dollars in advance to get in the ring with Deontay Wilder. Man, please, Tyson Fury, come back. UK fans, because I think Deontay Wilder just needs to just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Fight whoever you got to fight, whatever, and let this clown continue to make his vitamin water commercials. You know, let him skin and grin for the cameras. You know what I mean? <laughs> let him, why he why he loses that 30 pound, why he tries to find a way to, to lose 20 pounds of that muscle. In order so that he's able to fight for the WBC title, you know, if it's ridiculous, man, but it is what it is, man. That's what, you know, that's what boxing is over there, you know, in the heavyweight division, right? The, 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 it went from having two heavyweight champions couldn't fight each other because they were brothers in the fight and the fight kind of being dull, 
right? Just kind of, you know, hold, grab, hold, grab, hold, grab, bounce. See, now you have somebody that is just a complete and utter corporate. He's just a corporate facade. And you can say I'm hating on Anthony Joshua, whatever. I, I don't care, man. Maybe Tyson Fury will get right and dice, and then we'll have to deal with the excuses. Give Tyson Fury two or three fights, and then we'll. And if he looks too good, then we'll start having to hear the excuses about De why Anthony Joshua doesn't want to fight uh, Tyson Fury, unless Anthony Joshua gets beat first by like a Pavetkin or somebody. But you know, it is what it is, man. And you know, I'm out. Peace.